more than a year after the January 6th attack, the fight for justice is facing new hurdles. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarlane has been reporting on this and joins us now from Capitol Hill. Scott, hello. Uh, I guess we're dealing with delays. Yeah, this has been a growing complication. There's a backlog that has formed inside the courthouse where all these cases are being adjudicated, a backlog chiefly caused by COVID. They don't have jurors. They don't have juries assembling through at least mm -hmm. mid-February. There's a backlog that formed during the start of the pandemic, and it's increased with all these January 6 cases. It's a complication, but it has this new twist. It's not happening in a vacuum. The former president this weekend dangled the ideas of future pardons for January 6 defendants, which could very much complicate the ongoing plea negotiations from the Justice Department and some of the higher level January 6 defendants. We've confirmed there are ongoing plea talks in defendants' cases involving defendants who were accused of assaulting police that day or of conspiracy, of plotting and planning ahead of January 6. So the cases now defense lawyers caution could push into 2024 mm. or 2025 with the backlogs and the court operating at limited capacity. Wow. So speaking of those backlog, Scott, you spoke to Capitol Police Officer uh, Harry Dunn, who, as we all know, found himself defending the Capitol on January 6th. He's testified before Congress. Um, I want to play a little bit of what he told you about the impact those delays are having. You got to put things in perspective. And um, yeah, everybody wants to rush and everybody wants immediate um, acknowledgement or gratification about anything. It's worth the wait. It's worth the wait. He says it's worth the wait, Scott. Uh, do you know if Officer Dunn or any of those Capitol Police officers who were defending uh, the Capitol on that day are going to be a part of these negotiations, testifying again, perhaps? They Vlad, they are. They're on the witness list in some of the highest level cases, according to our reporting, including the cases of those accused of conspiracy or assault that day. And not just Officer Dunn, but at least one other of his colleagues. Officer Dunn did not just suffer the physical assaults and the racial epithets on January 6th, but he's been high profile in advocating for justice and has taken some social media heckling if not verbal assault in the months since January 6th as well. But he's cautioning, you have to be patient. Those who are involved with the cases, those who are waiting for justice, need to have this expectation that it's going to take many months, if not years, for some of these cases to close. The courts are backlogged. These trials are a ways off. Our reporting is there are only five trials scheduled before the end of March. Some trials are quite clearly flat and amory going to move into 2023. Listen, you know, uh, at the beginning here, you brought up what the former president, President Trump, had to say, um, you know, talking about pardons while people are negotiating deals, perhaps. Why are federal judges concerned about what they're hearing from the former president? They have been unequivocally concerned for quite some time. As early as last summer, we had judges saying defendants could not be released from jail from pretrial detention or could not get lesser, looser release conditions because the judges said Donald Trump's words about the 2020 election, his ongoing political rhetoric, makes those defendants a danger moving forward. So we had judges holding the line in the cases of some defendants because of what Donald Trump was saying then. This new series of statements over the weekend about pardons, about the overturning of an election and what Mike Pence could or couldn't do, only threatens to make judges more likely to hold defendants under tighter release conditions or keep them in jail. It's worth noting, approximately 730 people are charged right now in January 6 cases. There'll likely be dozens or hundreds more, but only a small percentage, about 10%, are in pretrial detention. They're all seeking to get out. This complicates matters for those defendants. Scott McFarlane uh, with some excellent reporting on the Hill for us today. Scott, thank you as always, my friend. Appreciate it.